The X-Files. Now, guys, I remember when this show was on TV. My mom never missed an episode. Before the official DVD sets came out, we even had bootleg DVDs of the complete series. We loved this show. So when my mom gifted me an X-Files video game on the PS1, I was super excited to play it, especially after reading the back of the case where it said Mulder and Scully are actually in the game in live action. That's right, it's an FMV game. Not only that, but the FMVs were filmed, written, and produced by the creators of the TV show and the TV crew. The creators were very involved in its development and left it up to Hyperbole Studios to convert their story into a game. Now hearing all that, could it be possible that this is actually a half-decent game? Just watch. So the game starts off with Mulder and Scully walking into a warehouse and getting ambushed by men in black who get killed by a bright white light, and then leaves us on a cliffhanger. I was blown away because I believed I was going to be playing an episode of the show and get to be Mulder and Scully searching for Demela Mouse. But it turns out David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson's window of time they could be on set for this game was extremely limited. So Mulder and Scully are barely in the game. Instead, you play a new character, Craig Wilmore, who works for the Seattle FBI office. Why Agent Wilmore? Why Agent Cook? You picked a great day to be late. Some big gun in from DC. I don't know what's up, but it looks serious. So when you talk to characters, you get dialogue options, and sometimes you get options based on your mood rather than what you're going to say. This first one actually dictates some of the things you'll see in the game. Like if you select paranoid, you'll see shadows and other things that aren't really there. Not only is this an FMV game, but it's a point and click. And if you don't know my stance on point and click games, let's just say if you gave me a point and click game and said play it or shove it up your ass, I'd have putt putt in my butt butt. I tell you one thing this game has got a lot of JPEGs. Lots and lots of JPEGs. We got JPEGs everywhere we can look at. We got JPEGs over here, JPEGs over there. Look at all these sweet JPEGs. That's a game in and of itself. Just see how many JPEGs you can find. This is Assistant Director Skinner. Oh, okay. I had already forgot I was playing an X-Files sure. game. Skinner tells you that Mulder and Scully are missing, and the only lead he has on their whereabouts is that they were staying in a hotel in Washington. Holy product placement, Batman. It's an Apple Newton. Now, when I first played this game, I just ran my ass straight to the hotel with Skinner. What I didn't realize was I was supposed to pick up my equipment. The game doesn't tell you that. You have to figure it out yourself when the front desk lady asks you for your FBI badge. Can you show me some identification? And you don't have it. You know where it was? In this drawer. There we go. There's all our stuff. All of it. Right? Okay, I got a gun and handcuffs now. Wait, do what that. if I arrest Skinner? Don't do that. I really can't believe I'm having to do this. After five years at the Bureau, you should know better. I need your badge and gun. <laughs> we got fired! And the game just ends. No continue, no checkpoint, you just gotta load a save if you have one. Luckily, you can save at any point in the game. And you better do it, because you're gonna fuck up a lot. A blue one, and a black one, and a yellow one, and a odd. Shoot the kid, shoot the kid, shoot the kid! What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't worry, it won't let you do it. It just fades out. You can shoot Skinner, though. And it's that fucking stock-ass gun sound effect. Shadow the Hedgehog used that. Oh no, we went to jail. So we can't shoot anybody, we can't arrest anybody, but we can still be an asshole. Please don't do that. Do you know how many people do that with me sitting right here? No. Well, you're not the first. Again, again! What are you, a child? I said, don't do that. Again, again, again! You cannot stop me! I ring forever! When I went in Mulder's hotel room, I found this weird newspaper that had some funny-ass articles in it. It's no secret that several secret Air Force bases in the Northwest have harbored alien crafts and ALFs in the past. So that's where the name ALF came from. Mufon, Kufo, Sinpil, CSI Cop? Where's the kaboom? The earth-shattering kaboom. <laughs> Wonder what's on the old CRT? What? What's this? Oh, there he is! We found him! Real Alamau! Look at him! I love him! Fuck it, I'm taking this with me. Oh, and Scully's got a bibble! Let's read the bibble! Wow, this font is ginormous! What is this, a bibble for old people? Every Bible I ever owned, you needed a freaking microscope to read, so wow! Remember how I said we didn't get all of our equipment? There's a whole other shelf in the FBI office that we need to open to get the rest of our stuff. Why couldn't you just already have this stuff instead of having to go back to the office when you realize you don't have something you need? 
point and clicks, man. Jeez. So I found a phone number that Mulder called, and I used my handy dandy computer to look up that phone number. You know, it still aggravates me that in 2021, there's still no decent free way to do this. When I miss a call, I'm scared to call back because it might be about your car's extended warranty that I don't have. But it might be Walmart saying I got the greeter job. I can greet, damn it. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Have a butt fucking good Saturday. So we break into this warehouse and I'm supposed to use my evidence kit on the evidence that I find. Thing is, some of this evidence is really well hidden and there's like a hundred screens they could be at. So you have to do that shit of slowly hovering the cursor over every little area and just hope you find something. And even then, I still don't find everything. You see that circle on the top right? That gives you hints. And if you're really stuck, it'll straight up do a puzzle for you sometimes. I end up having to use that a lot. So after I collect all my evidence, I go outside and there's a guy docked at the warehouse. How old's your daughter? Seven. Young for a man your age. I'm surprised. I eat a lot of fish. I don't get it. And this is where we go to the crime lab and meet my favorite character in this game. John. Is there any reason why someone would treat this like contraband? Nope. It's neither illegal nor sexy. Did you get those prints lifted? I just fetched them, Miss Daisy. I still need to process them. Hey, when are you going to pay me that dollar? Did you know that I grew up in Cleveland? Oh, Cleveland? Really? Yes. And as a child, I've always regarded it as hell. Do you have any idea how cold it is in Cleveland? Cold. Very cold. It is very cold in Cleveland today. But not cold enough. Yeah, John's cool. He gives me the one little comic relief I need to make it through this damn game. You and me, John. Then we go to the warehouse, and there's some people getting a box out of the bottom of the floor. What's in the box? Who are these people? What are they doing? What's going on? I have no fucking clue. The cutscene ends. We go home. We go to bed, and it's never brought up again. Oh, no, the fisherman guy died. He was in this game all of two minutes. And then we meet this lady, Detective Astadorian, who we talked to for three quarters of this entire game. This is almost like watching a spin-off show of the X-Files. Weren't there some episodes of the X-Files where Mulder and Scully were completely replaced? Yeah, like the eighth or ninth season, they replaced Mulder with Doggett. Kind of like how they replaced the main cast of Dukes of Hazard. What if somebody replaced me? Yo, yo, gamers. We're gonna be looking at Fortnite on the Ouya boys. First off, what's up with that name? I ought to call that crap Fartnut. You know, I like a good Fartnut. <laughs> Hey, 420, bro. Get the fuck off my microphone! Ah! I'm okay. So our escapades bring us to a Russian tugboat. And you know it's Russian because look at all the split we can suka on. And there's a computer. Is it a Russian computer? Dude, I would so play a Comrade 64. When you go to the bottom floor of the boat, it has some creepy ass music. That's one thing I've noticed about this game. Sometimes the atmosphere is really creepy. And when it works, it works. It's not often an FMV game freaks you out. Well, Harvester does, but... When I was a kid and played this game, this kind of freaked me out. The outlines of bodies on the side of the wall. In X-Files canon, there's an alien that kills people with radiation, and this is what it does. So we go to the coroner's office to look at the fishermen, and the coroner tells us that Mulder and Scully were here, and they looked at the bodies of the people on the tugboat. So we go to look at them, and they're gone. <laughs> So Miss DeLorean gets it through her mind. Hmm, missing FBI agents? Radiated missing bodies? Assassinations? Must be Russian plutonium smuggling! We've stumbled upon a smuggling ring bringing either radioactive material or possibly chemical weapons into the U.S. from the former Soviet Union. I'm going to have to demand that we cooperate fully with one another. Okay. You just got yourself a new partner. I love how he completely caved into that, like, oh, okay. What if I don't want to be your partner, Erstimer? I don't even know how to say your name. Earlier, we found some fingerprints on the tugboat. Like they were put there after the boat had been already dusted for prints. Yeah, somebody's put their hand on this after it's already been dusted. So we call John and tell him to analyze them. Now, John is supposed to send us an email with what he finds, but here's where the game gets weird. You have two computers you can get a hold of, one at the FBI office and the one at your apartment. You only get that email email if you use the computer at your apartment because a cutscene is supposed to happen there. You've got mail. Turns out those fingerprints belong to our actual partner. 
I did not add that, by the way. He storms into your apartment all pissed. He tells me he's being followed and that he also thinks this has to do with Russian smuggling and the FBI might be covering it up and Mulder and Scully were axed because they got too close. Wow, that sure is laying a bunch of plot in my face. Now we're back at the warehouse and oh, whoa, who's this? One of us behind this truck. Let's not go behind the truck. Barbecue, the foulest of crimes. Oh, disc three. Oh, better change the disc. Yeah, we got four of them bad boys. Toasted Cardigan comes by. She's got a tape. What's on the tape? I hope it's the Wraith. I just watched that. Hey, it's not flashing midnight. Impressive. I like a man who's not afraid of technology. So let's see what's on that tape. Surprise, motherfucker. Ah! So, what do you think? <laughs> now I'm at the office for a hauling business, and some asshole beats the shit out of me, locks the door, and then it activates a bomb. Good thing I found some wire cutters. Red, blue, or green? It's always red or blue in the movies. So, green? No, not the green. Well, that ain't it. So you're not even supposed to use the wire cutters. You're supposed to use a shovel to beat a hole in the vent. So they just gave you those wire cutters to fuck with you. I do have a question about how this game was made. Did they have to build two separate buildings to blow up for each cutscene? So what do you do after you escape an exploding building? Go to bed! So Cook, my partner, tells me he solved my case, and that we're going to a different warehouse to raid somebody. We've accumulated enough evidence to warrant a raid. We leave ASAP. The SWATs are joining us at the site. No need to thank me. I don't know, Cook. You really sound sketchy. You're sketchier than an $80 commission. What about Astadorian? You should call and tell her what you're doing. Done. Already left her a message. I'm the Martha Stewart of crime prevention. So we go to the warehouse, and this is the first time in the game we actually get to use our gun. Cover me. You got it. Damn, move over, lethal enforcers. If you get shot just once, you die. Which sucks because the game gets to where it hides motherfuckers in the corners. <laughs> you missed that one. Try another! So we find the guy Cook claims is the Russian sm- The Russian smuggler. <laughs> we question the Russian smuggler, and it seems like he has no idea what we're even talking about. He knew our fisherman friend, and the tugboat belonged to him, but when we mention the warehouse, the plutonium, or Mulder and Scully, he acts clueless. I handle all sorts of things, but never that. You are talking crazy. Then Cook says there's a gun on the first floor. I spotted a 38 downstairs, back left corner. Now at the warehouse, I found a 38 bullet, and we dug a 38 bullet out of the fisherman. But here's the problem. I was down there in that back corner in the first floor, and that gun wasn't there. <laughs> Were there any fish in that barrel? Sure enough, they all three match. You know how we sent John to check out the prints on the tugboat? He got radiation sickness from the boat! John, no! The Terracon had dangerously high levels of radioactivity. He sent me into a hot area. That's what's wrong with me. I don't have the flu. I have radiation sickness. And that is unfortunately the last time we ever see John. I hope he didn't die, damn! So we go back home and... Oh? What the hell were you thinking? About what? About your It's custodian, and she is pissed. I had turned that case over to the task force, and you two cowboys go running off shooting up a place without so much as a phone call? Do you have any idea how stupid I look? And while Toasted Argentinian is blessing us out, we get a weird phone message. Agent Wilmore, we must meet right away. Your actions are endangering the lives of Mulder and Scully. They are alive, but they won't be for much longer unless you act quickly. This has nothing to do with Russian smugglers. Yeah, the X-Files would be pretty boring if that was the case, man. Now can we hunt for Ayla Mouse? And what do we do before we rendezvous with a weird stranger? Go to bed, go to bed, go to bed, go to bed, go to bed. It's here that we finally see another character from the show. Mr. X, who was a mysterious informant to Mulder. He tells us where Scully is and tells us that Mulder is still alive somewhere. This has nothing, I repeat. Nothing to do with smuggled Soviet plutonium. So that whole wild goose chase about Russian smuggling that I was on for half the game was all just bullshit? Gotcha. Now how about them aliens? If you're going to help Scully and Mulder, you're going to need something more than a gun. 
Uh-uh, no way, man. I saw the video of a guy sticking that up his pee hole. The man that Mulder and Scully were looking for and the man that you need to find if you're going to save them can only be killed by inserting this blade. Don't you say it. Into the base of his neck. Oh, okay. You don't mind me using this knife to skin a deer, do you? Hey, what the? Mastodon, what are you doing here? Whoa, take it easy. It's me. I can see that. <laughs> okay, that didn't happen. All right, let's go to the hospital and see Scully. Oh, last disc. We about to nut this pizza. Sure enough, Scully is at the hospital and she's almost fully recovered from her gunshot wound. You see what I meant when I said Mulder and Scully are literally at the end of this game? We're about to wrap this up. Scully says that her and Mulder were investigating what killed the people on the tugboat. And Mulder thinks that they were somehow killed by an EBE. EBE? Extraterrestrial Biological Entity. Yes, finally, Ayla Mouse. Now it's time for UFO porno. The crew had all been exposed to levels of radiation consistent with a large-scale nuclear blast. Now, clearly, that didn't happen, but Mulder took that as proof that a UFO had landed in the area and that an alien life form aboard the craft had irradiated the Terracon crew. I take it you don't subscribe to that theory? There is always an alternate explanation. Scully, I watched this show. I've seen all the crazy shit y'all have seen, but you're still going to sit there and say, nah, it ain't no alien. Now we're in a train yard, and we go look for a boxcar with a number on it. There it is. We find it, and it's been burnt to the crisp. Then this homeless guy shows up, says he's got something out of the boxcar, but you have to guess what it is. Now it's possible to actually get this wrong and game over. But luckily the game gives you a checkpoint if you do that. But look at these choices. Magneto optical drive? What the fuck even is that? Well, it turns out it was a videotape, so Gaston Amon and Cook all gather around your computer. This is like every nerd's worst nightmare. A bunch of people huddled around your computer. Like one of your Discord friends, P. You like, ooh, woo, check out my dick, bruh. Check out this crazy penis of mine. Whoa, what episode of ER is this? Is this the one where Dr. House fights the lupus alien? So the box car is for alien surgery. They take out the alien's tonsils. I hope they give him a sucker. So we get a video call, and it's the lone gunman, a trio of guys from the show who know everything about little green dudes. So we just looked you up in the Peekaboo white pages, which lists the DNS entry and IP address of every Peekaboo equipped machine in the country. Pretty straightforward, really. You want Jana Reno's number? No, I'll, I'll pass. Thanks. Are you sure? She keeps the computer in the bedroom. They tell us that there's a base in Alaska that's responsible for making boxcars for alien surgery, for combining human DNA and alien to make basically imposters, and there's an actual UFO being stored up there. We think they chose Alaska so they can use the Aurora Borealis to hide UFO traffic into and out of the base. Ah, <laughs> the what? The what now? That guy on the tape is the guy that beat me up in the hauling yard, and he's a bad, bad man. And it's possible he might have kidnapped Mulder, so we go to his house first. We go to his house, and the guy's dead! And he's covered in motor oil. I mean, okay, I like ear fucking, so I can't judge. Then I go up in the attic, and there's motor all tied up. What kind of kinky shit was going on in here? Jeez, man, do I know you? Cable guy. Mulder tells us that the surgeon guy is being controlled by an alien and is trying to get back to its ship. He also tells us a little bit more about these imposter alamows. Well, there's a species of alien that can use humans as host. The, the parasite completely takes over the target human, even gaining access to knowledge that the human possesses. The only way you can tell the difference is there's a thin film of black oil that swims over the victim's eyes. The crew of the Terracon came across one of these Valdez-type aliens, who promptly nuked them. The government apprehended it and put it in one of their boxcars, but somebody screwed up and it escaped. Oh, I can see that shit right now. Oh, I let the alien loose. He wanted to go on a smoke break. So me and Mulder get ready to leave and go to the base, but then, uh-oh. Great, it looks like we got some uninvited guests. NSA? We're Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> What's funny is now Agent Wilmore wants to leave. He found Mulder and Scully. His work is done. I was assigned to find you and Scully. I've done that. I'm out of here. What kind of attitude is that? The game's not over yet. Don't you want to wait around for the payoff? Fourth wall? Well, I guess I better kill those bad guys then. What? My gun doesn't reach far enough or some shit? <laughs> you missed that one. Try another! 
Oh god, he did the ah sound, that stock death sound. Well, here's the Alaskan base, and there's the Aurora Borealis. Man, the layout of this base is really confusing. There's a bunch of different doors, but it's hard to tell which JPEG takes you to what door. And there's a lot of spots in the game that just lead you straight to a death. Like, do not go in this room with the jars. Jars equal death. I'm already dead. <laughs> Agent Wilmore, I'm glad you're here. I know where Agent Mulder is. Come with me. Rip. We find Mulder, but now he's acting a little sussy. Run. What the game doesn't tell you is that after this cutscene, it puts an enemy right next to you. And it makes one hell of a mess when it dies. Hey, remember how I thought my partner had planted evidence and that all this Russian smuggling shit was made up? Shocker, I was right. Agent Wilmore, fancy meeting you here. So it's you? Yes, it's me. Plutonium smuggling, Russians, Wong. Actually, I made everything up. Luckily, he doesn't notice I have my gun drawn, so... <laughs> I never liked that son of a bitch. I'm sure this is gonna have no consequences whatsoever. In fact, I'm so sure of that I'm going to save because this is totally something that's not gonna change the game in any way. It changes everything. I don't know what's wrong with Mulder. I think he's in some kind of a narco-somnambulistic state. How do you spell Maybe that? If we can lure him into the isolation chamber. I, I can contain him until I can figure out how to treat him. Okay. So we gotta open the isolation chamber and then grab those keys that Mulder wants. Then he has to chase after us and get him trapped in there. Uh-oh, there he is. Time to book it, boys. This is it, the end of the line. We are about to say fuck it to this game. Well, that's that. Now to meet the final boy. What? What? Huh? I've never seen this part before. Now I'm the Ablian. Well, I guess I'm dead. Wait, what if I get behind Motor and hit him with that blade? He died? Oh, fuck! I didn't want to kill Mulder! I'm sorry about this. This comes from the very top. There's nothing I can do about it. And I lost my job! Holy shit! So apparently what has happened is because I killed Cook, I have locked myself into the bad ending no matter what I do. And I don't have any of my saves prior to that. So to try to get the good ending, I would have to play this game all over again. And you know what? I'm just not gonna do that. I don't have time. So you know what I had to do? I had to go to YouTube and the only video on fucking YouTube that had the good ending was a two hour long walkthrough of the game that was two gigabytes big, and I have a 15 gigabyte data limit. Oh, I was so fucking happy to download this fucking shit. Stupid fucking game make me have to download fucking two fucking gigabytes of motherfucking data. There we go, that's what's supposed to happen. Cook gets alienized. He tries to get us to open the door that has the spaceship in it, but Scully has the blade, so... <laughs> We return to the FBI office. Scully says goodbye. Anyway, I've got a plane to catch, but Agent Mulder wanted me to tell you that his foot has woken up. Agent Wilmore. Yo, man, you don't have to sneak up on me with music. I guess I know what you want. Hold on a second, I'll go get it. I think not. You'd better keep it. You're gonna need it again. Soon. Ooh, foreshadowing! Sequel? Sequel, perhaps? No, they never made a sequel. But they did make another X-Files game. X-Files Resistor Serve on PS2. Now, you know what's interesting about this game is the fact that I'm going to review it next review.